what's up there do yourself first today I'm going to do a quick video and show you how you can uh, diagnose and fix uh, problems with your car's heating system now there are plenty of reasons why your uh, heater is not blowing hot air so in this video we'll work our way from the most common causes in my experience and then uh, work our way downwards okay so the first thing we need to check is our coolant level we do that by opening up the radiator cap now make sure you do this on a cool engine because uh, if you do this on a hot engine uh, hot coolant is going to come out spraying at you and that's not going to be a fun day okay And as you can see in this car, we got coolant all the way to right below this uh, radiator cap, so we're fine there. The second most common cause is that you have air in your cooling system. Now, maybe you recently replaced a water pump or a thermostat or maybe just a radiator hose or something else that required opening up the cooling system and whoever was doing the repair didn't properly bleed out all the air from the system. Now, that air is trapped in your heater core and therefore your uh, heater is not uh, working properly. Also another common sign of air in your uh, cooling system is that if you're sitting in the car you can sometimes actually hear the water or the coolant gushing around and uh, that's a definite sign that uh, you have more than enough air in your system and you need to bleed it out. So in order to bleed air out of your system you want to make sure you park on a level ground or level surface or even better yet park uphill a little bit so that your, uh, where your radiator cap is or where your coolant reservoir, where you're going to be putting coolant is uh, higher than the rest of your engine. Next you want to put on your funnel. Now I have these uh, spill free funnels, they come with adapters and whatnot that keeps them in place while I'm putting coolant in, but if you don't have these, don't worry. Because you can also use these regular funnels that you get from your auto parts store. You just want to make sure you get the right size. It needs to be small enough where it goes through the hole that's in the center here and also big enough that when you press it in, it's, uh, it stays firmly in place. Because when you go to bleed the system, you're gonna have to, you know, if you're low on coolant, you're gonna have to put coolant in here, and then later on, once the coolant starts heating up, it's gonna come, it's gonna come out from your radiator into this funnel, and if this is not held firmly in place, it's gonna loosen and it's gonna spill over, and that's not gonna be a fun day either. If you decide to use a small funnel like this, just make sure it's thoroughly clean and not dirty like mine. I don't use this for uh, bleeding out air from my uh, cooling system. This is just for demonstration purposes only. And then if you're uh, low on coolant, just add coolant. But as soon as you see coolant on the, towards the bottom of this funnel, you want to stop because you want to give yourself plenty of uh, room for the coolant that's going to be build, uh, com coming out from your radiator once the car heats up and uh, pressure builds up inside the cooling system. Okay. Next you want to get inside your car and turn on your engine. Then you want to turn on your uh, heat setting to all the way to the max. And also go ahead and turn on your blower fan. Now on this car it's not necessary to turn on the blower fan and if you have, but if you have electrical controllers it might be necessary. And when you turn your heater setting to the max it's going to open up your heater core and you're going to be able to bleed out all the air that's possibly trapped in there. Now with the engine running, you want to just put uh, enough coolant that the coolant level comes just, uh, just uh, to the bottom of this funnel here. And then you want to wait for the engine to reach operating temperature and then afterwards for your cooling fans to come on and off twice. Now while this is happening, don't be afraid to press on your uh, radiator hoses. Sometimes that helps uh, dislodge air bubbles that are trapped in your system. Also you can rev the gas pedal or just play with this uh, throttle plate. That will also help this large air bubbles. Alright now this process takes anywhere from 15 to 25 minutes or so but uh, it's very important. It's uh, really important to get all the air out of the system. I would say between your uh, coolant being low and the air in your uh, cooling system uh, you'll probably solve most of your uh, heating problems, okay? All right, next, uh, if you're still not getting uh, hot air coming out of your air vents, well, you need to next check your uh, hoses that go to your heater core. And they're usually pretty easy to find. Just towards the back of the engine, you're going to find two hoses, usually right next to each other, that go into your firewall, which is this guy here. This whole entire portion of your car is your firewall. And in our case, it's going to be those two hoses right down there. Now your car at operating temperature and your heater setting turned all the way to the max, you want to get your hand on both these, uh, these hoses and you want to check in for, uh, see how hot they are. They both need to be the same temperature. If you find one that's cooler than the other, find one that's hot and the other one is just warm and you have a problem with your uh, 
heater core potentially being clogged. But before we can condemn your heater core, if your car is equipped with a control valve like this car is, you want to make sure this control valve is turning freely. You need to be able to turn this by hand. And if it's stuck in the cool position, then obviously it's going to be blocking hot coolant from going to your heater core. So therefore, you would need to replace this. Now let's talk quickly about your heater control valve. On this 1997 Toyota Camry, your heater control valve is operated by wire. That wire runs uh, directly from your heater control valve all the way inside to the temperature controller that's inside your car. Now, any of these components can break and cause a problem with your heating system, your control valve, the wire, and uh, the temperature controller that's inside your car. So you want, you want to make sure you place the right part before uh, you blame the control valve, okay? Now other makes and models, the heater control valve could be operated by vacuum or electronically. So you wanna make sure you, before you blame the valve itself, you, uh, you uh, diagnose other, all the other components that are in that system. Uh, so you don't have to throw parts at the problem, okay? And yet on other cars, there's no heater control valve at all. The warm coolant is continuously traveling through your heater core. But the way they uh, control the temperature that comes out of the, that the temperature of the air that comes out of your air vents inside your car and those system is that there is a flapper door inside your, on your uh, heater core assembly that's usually inside your dash in some godforsaken place. And these doors are usually uh, vacuum operated. And obviously when you turn the, your uh, temperature controller all the way to the warm, to the hottest setting, the door is all open all the way and when it's in the cool setting, it's closed all the way. A lot of times there's a problem with the, either the vacuum lines or the switch or the actuator for the, for the, for the door itself that's causing your car, uh, that's causing you not to get uh, heat out from your air vents, okay? Okay, now back to your heater core. So if you find out your valve is working correctly but still one of the hoses is warmer than the other, then you probably have a clogged or blocked heater core. And uh, we recommend you try to unclog it before you replace it, since replacing it is a lot of takes a lot of man hours and it's pretty difficult to do. And you unclog it, and you can usually unclog it by basically undoing these two hoses from the engine side. On this car, it's fairly easy. They go into this housing that's right underneath this uh, intake tube, and you undo the both hoses, and then you get your uh, garden hose and uh, force water through one hose and out the other and then you back flush it, which basically means you just switch it. You just force water through the other hose, and you do this a couple of times, and it usually helps unclog your heater core. You can also get some uh, radiator flush uh, products that they sell at your local auto parts store. Put that fluid into, these, into one of these hoses and let it sit inside your heater core, and what that does is usually helps uh, break things up, and then when you go to uh, force water down one, one hose and not the other, you can get more stuff and more crud and uh, stuff out that way and help uh, unclog your heater core. Okay, another cause could be a bad thermostat which is stuck in the open position. Those are usually easy to diagnose since your temperature gauge will be all the way on the bottom and you're, you'll have a really hard time reaching operating temperature if you have a stuck open uh, thermostat. And on four cylinder cars they're really easy to replace. They're, uh, in fact on this car it's right there it only takes two bolts to remove that thermostat housing and replace your thermostat. And obviously a thermostat that's stuck closed is gonna let you know quite quickly as well since your uh, temperature gauge will uh, climb quickly. But you usually won't have a problem with your uh, heating system if you have a thermostat that's stuck in the closed position. And to give you a quick demonstration of a stuck thermostat not being the cause of no heat is that let's say on this engine, let's say that thermostat which is in there is stuck closed. So what happens is that when you Start the engine from a uh, cold start, the, the coolant inside there starts warming up and since the two hoses that come from your uh, heater core are back there, they go from, from uh, your heater core through the firewall to that side of your cylinder head, the, the coolant has no problem warming up and traveling through your uh, heater core there. But if it's stuck open, the coolant that's inside there doesn't get a chance to warm up. In fact, it's just traveling quickly, way too quickly through your uh, cooling system. Just travels from there to here to your radiator. Your radiator fans cool it down, travels back, and it's just happening way too fast before it gets a chance to warm up. Therefore, it won't get a, you, you, you don't get a hot coolant going to your heater core and uh, your, he your heating system is not gonna work properly.
That's all there is to it. Just remember, if you decide to use one of these regular funnels instead of the spill-free funnels, make sure you get the right size and that can be, you know, held in place firmly and it doesn't spill over. And if it does spill over, make sure you jump out of the way quickly so it doesn't spill all, all over you. And if it does spill all over you, don't blame ratchets and wrenches. Because <laughs> I warned you earlier. Okay, so yeah, with that said, Hope this video is cool out there. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more like it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.